해고. 헤이 워드 솔더즈 마이 네임 스크래 FPS 더 잠비즈 익스트로네어 에브리원 띵스 마이 잠비즈 오피니언즈 아 롱 에스페셜리 포 바락트 앤 에이 퓨 어더 맵스 아 디사이드 투 테이크 아 스텝 백 앤 리뷰 이즈 잠비즈 맵 베이스드 오프 20 디퍼런 카테고리 이즈 카테고리 이즈 워스 5 포인트 프레이 큐뮬러브 토럴 오프 100 디스 이즈 에이 토럴리 시리즈 리뷰 위드 미임스 인클루드 디스 이즈 에피소드 1 낙트 더 버스 플레이스 오프 잠비 Right after beating the World at War campaign with Reznov, going through the credits and all of a sudden, you see a crash plane and something running at you. It was a shocker. You didn't know what was happening. You didn't know this single moment would change Call of Duty as a franchise. Fast forward to now, we've had fantastic zombies experiences, a good experience, an okay experience, and well, to be frank, a tragic experience. Innovation for NOC can't be based off a previous map because there simply isn't one. It introduced a lot a new mode mystery box zombies wall weapons barriers a sniper cabinet so you could quick scope nazi zombies with a scoped car 98 or at least try because we both know it was terrible and everything was new everything was fresh to innovate you need to start somewhere so for that i give knock a perfect five out of five for innovation The atmosphere of the map puts off a scary vibe. The scream of zombies slowly making their way to the windows, the sounds of screeching as the boards are ripped off, all of this puts off a really freaky vibe. The unsettling continuous guitar chug and the dun dun playing like this in the background. It was scary, at least for most of us, upon release in 2008. It was eerie and that unsettling feeling kept you anticipating for what was to come next. The atmosphere is a 5 out of 5, spot on perfect. It's no surprise that nostalgia is 100% subjective to the eyes of the beholder. Instead of basing it off of my personal opinion, I did a poll on Twitter and out of the 463 votes, the community decided 3 out of 5 was a proper grade for the nostalgia of Noct. It really depends on where you started. For example, if you started playing zombies in World at War, it would be a higher rating as opposed to someone that just started playing zombies in Black Ops 2. Noct is by far one of the most difficult maps in zombies history. In World at War, there was no perks. It was just a bare bones map with a box and wall weapons. And continuing to Black Ops 1 with the same wall weapons and the only addition was Mule Kick. Sticking to the same formula, when you go down, it is game over. Now, with improved three guns instead of two. Then Black Ops 3 came along. Why don't we add Juggernaut, increase the spawn time for zombies a little bit longer on the early rounds, and also add in Gobblegum Machine so players can get packed guns from the box. Although many people like the addition of actual good perks, it took away from the difficulty. Basing it off of all three, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5 because Black Ops 3 single-handedly made it kind of a joke. In their original version of Noc, the only wonder weapon was the ray gun, the good old Uncle Ray Ray. Some other fantastic guns that you could use from World at War was the Browning M1919, the Panzer Shrek, I'm joking, MG42, and of course, you can't forget the Flamethrower, a fan favorite weapon everyone loved. In Black Ops 1, they added in the Thunder Gun, adding a little variety and adding a much stronger gun overall. In Black Ops 1, you couldn't upgrade it, so it was still a fair trade up for a stronger gun with limited shots. In Black Ops 3, the Raygun Mark II was added to the arsenal as well, but I don't think it made a huge difference. As far as wonder weapons go, I would give Noct a 3 out of 5 because it didn't have any map exclusive wonder weapons given it was really the first map ever in zombies. Obviously there was no main easter egg on this map so I'm going to exclude it from the rating completely. The only side easter egg I can think of on this map is the small Samantha Max Ammo easter egg on the Chronicles version of Noct. Since it is so minimal, I'm going to exclude it from the rating. 
The music easter eggs on Noct are really cool. Not only did you have the radio of all the versions of Noct, but you also had the addition of the song Undone once all the red oil barrels are blown up around the map on the Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3 iterations of the map. For music with the radio and Undone not having any real lyrics, I'm going to give the music easter egg a 3 out of 5 rating. Up until the release of the timeline when Chronicles came out, we didn't really have much to go off of for the storyline of Noct. It was just the US Marines fighting off Nazi zombies in an abandoned German bunker. When the timeline was released, the explanation for Noct was June 4th, 1945. An allied plane malfunctions over an airfield and crashes. German army trucks transporting the undead in LN-115 between Group 935 facilities is struck in the crash. The Marines surviving the crash hold out against the undead as long as they can. The story is fairly weak because it is the first map, so I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. Zombies is a replayable game to the eyes of the beholder. The main reason Noct is not really a replayable map is because it comes down to the same basic gameplay experience every single game. With no perks, limiting replayability, no unique weapons or wonder weapons, it is going to get a low score. The only redeeming factor for Noct replayability is the double-edged sword of Black Ops 3 Noct. It added gobblegums and perks, which added a new layer of replayability, but what it boils down to, it is a boring map. For that, Noct gets a 1 out of 5 for replayability. If you had the choice between Noct and another map, most people would play the other choice. Noct is the smallest map in Zombies history. It has three rooms, two staircases, and that's it. Over the course of time, it is going to get better, but if we are just going off the sheer size of Noct, it is a 1 out of 5. It is a bare bones map. I hate having to give it such a low score, but it just isn't anything special. There are two doors out of the spawn room in Noct. Some people go through the help door to go directly to the box and some people prefer to buy the middle staircase and go up through the upper floor and buy down to the box room. It really depends on the style of gameplay. Some people swear by only buying the staircase and say that if you buy the help door you're a noob, but it all depends on if a player is camping or training. I will break down those in camping as well as training sections coming up in the video soon. I will grade the map flow a 2.5 out of 5. As far as originality goes, it is the first map, so there wasn't really anything to base it off of. Just being in an abandoned German bunker is a cool setting, but I'm going to exclude this category for the rating as well. Every Zombies map has some impressive records. For Noct, we're just going to be taking a look at the solo high round record. On original Noct, Red Screens has the record with 1,359 rounds on World at War Noct. The strategy is running trains in the spawn room with the flamethrower and opening the middle stairway in spawn. In Black Ops, the record is 144 rounds and it took over 71.5 hours by Capino, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, who is a French player. In Black Ops 3, the record for Noct is by Crash My Bandicoot, who reached round 199 solo, which is also very impressive. Overall, most of these records are still not really gone for, but they were once competitive. I rate the records 4 out of 5 for this map. Over the course of time, Noct has become one of the most special maps because it was the first. The map was brought over from World at War to Black Ops 1 as part of the Resurrection map pack along with the other World at War maps and Moon. The only main addition to the map was Mule Kick and the box weapons changing. I think that the Black Ops 1 remake was the best because it kept all the same wall weapons so it was still a fresh take on an old classic. The next time we saw Noct was out in the cornfield of Transit. It only included the bottom spawn room level of the map and included one of the parts for one of the best wonder weapons of all time, the jet gun. The fourth time we saw Noct was as the main gateway for Revelations that connected all the different islands on Revelations. This was a great adaptation of the classic and even when you end the round inside it plays the classic round change music. The last time we saw Noct was in the Chronicles version. Like I have previously stated, I'm not a fan of the addition of gobblegums and perks, but that is subjective if you like different ways to play. Overall, the remakes, regardless of how you feel, are great and they were done well. 
except the fact that the Locust cost 5000 on Black Ops 3 Knock. This is a ripoff and way too overpriced. I give remakes a 5 out of 5. Great job. There are a couple different camping spots that people use on Knock depending on which door you open to leave the spawn room. If you end up opening the stairs, a great camping spot that you can go to is in the box room with your stairs to the left back up against the wall. You can kill the zombies spawning in that room from the windows on that level, and you can also kill the zombies coming down the stairs from the second level. The other camping spot you can use is if you open the help door and go upstairs, you can camp with your back to the grenade wall by. These two spots are great solo and co-op, as far as the rating goes, I would give them a 4 out of 5. There are a few different training spots that have been used when it comes to Noct in the past. The main strategy to go for really high rounds like the record, which is 1359 rounds, you can get the flamethrower from the box and run around the spawn room with the help door closed and train around the post by the help door and use the flamethrower the whole game. The same strategy was used in Crash My Bandicoot's round 199 on Noct and Black Ops 3. In Black Ops 1, they ended up training in the box room again with the help door closed. These training spots are a lot more difficult than most maps, but I'd have to give these training spots a 2.5 out of 5. Exclusivity is for things that are only available on that map. Since the map doesn't share or have anything specifically unique to the map like weapons or perks or anything like that, I don't think it is worth including in the review. It just wouldn't be fair. Co-op uses the same camping methods that was already mentioned to get higher rounds in casual public matches as well as just straight up co-op gameplay with friends. People going for co-op records or at least the current in Black Ops 3, which is round 82, used a method where one person would train in the spawn and they would have the help door open and one person would train in the box room. Then they would combine their trains together and one person would kill them all with the thunder gun. It seems like a harder method and more difficult overall to get high rounds in co-op because there are so many zombies spawning in. Overall, I give co-op a 3.5 out of 5 rating. Solos can be fun depending on the playstyles already mentioned. The map being old and not having much to offer can get very boring over time however. Overall, I would say solos are a 2 out of 5. Let's tally up the totals and see where Noct ends up. Out of the possible 80 points because we excluded 4 sections which were originality, main easter eggs, side easter eggs, and exclusivity, Noct got a total of 48 points. 48 points out of the possible 80, which is 0.6, which is 60%. Although 60% is a D- grade, it is not to say that Noct is a bad map. It's just basing off the criteria chosen for this series. It isn't going to be one of the best ratings. Considering I excluded areas that were not included with this map, I feel like it is the most accurate grade I could give for Nox. If you disagree, that is fine, but let me know which categories you think deserved a different grade. Thanks for watching and peace out.